Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Pixel. In today's video, we're going to be working on a transition door. What that means, it's it's technically going to be a teleporter that when you hit a door, it's going to slide a transition over your screen and then teleport you, similar to games like Meep City and some games that have that cartoony effect where when you enter a shop or something, it'll fade and then teleport you inside. So this was actually a suggestion by the user Connect kit on my discord server um, make sure you join my discord server if you have any suggestions so thank you for the suggestion so let's get started all right so the first thing we have to do is start setting up our game so what we're going to do is we're going to insert two parts the first one is going to be um, door one so let me just create a door we'll duplicate it this is going to be door one And then the other one is going to be door two. Um, and so you're, you're going to be able to walk through both of these doors and it will teleport you outside of the door facing forward. Um, also, make sure that when you go down here to surface and click on front surface, just click on this little bar, it'll highlight the front surface. Make sure that surface is pointing towards the direction out. So this is the part you walk into. Make sure it's facing that way or it will not work. So I'll just rotate this. So these parts should both be facing the same direction, which is this way. And now we can continue. So we're going to go to replicated storage and we're going to insert a remote event. So this is filtering enabled. And what we're going to name this is we're going to name it a uh, transition trigger. And we're going to use this to start the UI transition on the client. And to do that, we're going to need a GUI. So go ahead over to start a GUI, click on the white arrow and insert a screen GUI. You can name this anything you want, or if you already have a game, just go to the main GUI that you have, and then just put what I'm going to put inside inside of that, and it'll be fine. So we're going to insert a frame, and go down here into the properties and change the size in the X and the Y. We're going to set both of the scales to 1 and the offsets to 0, so this will fill up the whole screen. And then go back up and then change the color to black, like that. And then what we're, we're going to name this Teleframe, like that. And then you're just going to insert a local script and name it Teleport Handler. So we're going to work on the UI and the client side before we go to the server side. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to create um, a couple variables. Um, so the first one is going to be the player, which we can access using local player from game.players. Then we need the player GUI. So player um, wait for child player GUI. And the reason we um, need this is because we're going to set the top bar. I can't really show you, but there is a top bar when you play the game and it's slightly visible or sometimes it's invisible entirely. And because we want this fade to cover the entire screen, we need that top bar to be um, not transparent at all and be a solid color. So to do that, we're going to do player GUI set top bar transparency just like this um, and then zero so that should hide the top bar or technically show the top bar and then we're going to create three more the first one rep, rep storage is going to be our replicated storage um, where our remote event is and then we're just going to do trans trig to represent our transition trigger and then lastly we're going to set a variable for our frame so script out parent dot teleframe and then after that what we're going to do is we're going to do the function which is going to be trans trig dot on client event so when we fire the remote event from the server we're going to detect the event on the client and then we're going to basically um, do the tweens. So after that, we're going to do frame tween position U D I M two, 
which is, um, I really don't know how you pronounce it, but UDIM2, UDIM2, I guess. Um, and this is kind of like Vector3 for UI. It's a 2D version of it, basically. And this one has four values. And it looks just like when you go to position or size, they're the same thing. So in here, we're just going to type 0, 0, 0, 0. And what this is going to do is going, is going to put it in this position. Um, before we move on, actually, go over to position, Y, and set the scale to negative 1. And then go over here to our script. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some settings inside of here. Actually, don't put an extra comma. Um, so inside of these two parentheses here, the closed ones, put a comma. And then we're going to put in and then quad and then 0.5 like that. And then we're going to put a wait after. And what this is going to do, like I said, is this is going to put our tween in the middle of the screen, wait a second, and then go back down. And these, this is the easing direction and the easing style. If you watch my tween service video, I showed you guys what those things mean, but, um, these this is like a different type of animation depending on where it's going and since it's coming into the screen we're going to have it on in but these are kind of the defaults and then this is the time it takes quad is a nice animation style there's a lot of them but we're just going to leave it on quad and then what we're going to do is we're going to do frame tween position udim2 again dot new and essentially we're going to just copy this over like this but we're going to change this value to one so then it'll completely go away from your screen then we're going to wait another second and we're going to do frame dot position so when we're, instead of tweening it we're just going to directly set the position to udim2 dot new zero zero negative one zero and what this does is the reason we do this is because it's currently up here you can't really see it but it's up off your screen then we bring it down so it's covering the screen for a second um, it should take half a second to actually do the animation it will stay there for a second then the animation will go back down in half a second all the way down so it's under your screen basically and then after a second it will just teleport back up to the top so we can reset and do it all again so now that we have that, we're going to do the client scripts now. So go ahead and insert a script in door one. Um, we're just going to copy our script over to door two when we're done. So just have our one script. And what we're going to do, this is going to be uh, not that long, but it's going to be a bit complicated. So stick with me. The first um, variable is going to be rep storage again because we need to access our remote event. So we're going to do trans trig again. And then rep storage dot transition trigger and then local cam actually we don't need that I changed my mind um, and then local debounds equals false like that all right and then what we're going to do is we're going to detect when something touches our door and in almost every single one of my tutorials it involves some type of touched function and I made a video about this um, but I'm still going to go over it, um, just in case you haven't watched that video. Um, so we're going to detect if the parent of hit, which in this situation we want it to be the character, hit is going to represent um, maybe a leg or an arm or the torso or the humanoid root part, which are all items or objects of the character. So the hit.parent is going to be the actual model of our player's character. And then we're going to do find first child, which is going to find the first child named humanoid. So we put humanoid in there and then then. And this if statement is kind of like obvious. If this, um, if this is true, then we continue on with our script. And then now we're going to do another one, which is going to be debounce. If debounce equal equals false, then debounce equals true. And the way debounce works is it prevents this, the function from running multiple times. And then after that, we're going to create a variable for our player. And we're going to do game.players get player from character hit.parent like that. 
and then we're going to do if player then so we're did, we're saying if the player exists in case somehow the player like leaves as this animation is going on or just just in case we don't get an error so we don't get an error and then we're going to fire the client and then in for the parameter we're going to put player so it fires this player's client instead of everyone's client um well yeah and then we'll put a 0.5 second wait after that and then we're going to make a variable for the humanoid root part of the character so hit dot parent dot humanoid root part and this is the kind of new method of teleporting players because we used to use torso back then but now that r15 is out technically there is no more torso it's upper torso and lower torso and now that we even have arthro it might be a little different so we're just going to put humanoid root part which is constant for all types of characters and then hrp dot c frame equals game dot workspace dot door two dot c frame plus game dot workspace dot door two dot c frame dot look vector times four and what this is going to do is this going to set the c frame of our humanoid root part which is the rotation plus the um well it c frame when we're setting the c frame to another c frame it will not preserve orientation it will set the orientation specifically to the direction the door is facing so once we do that, we're going to set it to the second door C frame plus four studs in front of it. And look vector is a property of C frame. So we're basically, this value is one and then that times four. So we're basically saying place the player four studs in front of the door. And this will allow our player to face um, towards the camera. Um, well, in some cases, if the door is at a certain orientation, it will not preserve the camera. So the camera will not be facing the proper direction, but that's fine. Um, so this will put the player inside of, or the character in front of the door and then face them away from the door. And then after that, we're going to put a wait one and then debounce equals false. So we can continue running it. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to copy this script over to door two, open it up. So let me just go over here, close out of the script because it sometimes glitches, open up this one and change door two to door one, like that. And then this should be all that we need to do. If we go ahead and go over to the test tab, um, I'll just hit play here and it should work. If there's any errors, we can just open up the output. There we go. And now we're facing out. So this is pretty cool. If you guys use this in your game, if you guys have a Twitter, just tweet me on Twitter, add at me. If you end up using this in your game or you really like this tutorial, make sure you hit the like button and probably, hopefully you consider subscribing because I make um, videos almost every single day. So this is me signing off and as always, keep on scripting.